A Kite for Moon by Jan Yolen and Heidi Stemple. It was morning, and Moon sat alone in the sky. The stars were all abed. No one below was singing to her. No one was sending up rockets or writing poems about her. No one was taking her photograph or painting her picture. Moon began to feel terribly sorry for herself. Down below, a very small boy, flying his kite on the beach near his house, looked up at Moon. Moon, he called up to her, don't be sad. He ran as far as he could, all the way to the edge of the water, where Moon sat on the horizon. He tried to hug Moon, as his mother did to him whenever he was unhappy. But Moon was too far away. So he rode on his kite, promising to come some day for a visit. Then he let go of his kite, sending it up, up, up for Moon. Days went by, years. Moon waxed and waned. She counted shooting stars and meteors. She worried about peace down on Earth and strange objects whizzing by. She eclipsed. Many nights the boy watched Moon through a telescope his father had given him. Many days he sent up a new kite for Moon. Red kites? blue kites, green kites, yellow. Some fell back to earth. Some disappeared into the sky. And Moon watched the boy grow. Every day the boy studied hard. He learned his large numbers and his small sums. He learned algebra and equations. He learned geometry and tried to square the circle. He learned all about the sky and the moon. He learned to ride a bicycle, drive a car, fly a plane, and a rocket. Then one day, when he had learned enough, he went up, up, up in a big rocket ship with a fiery tail. Hello, Moon, he said. I've come for that visit. And the whole world watched. The boy in the story was inspired to visit the moon. So as he grew, he studied hard. He learned all about numbers and equations, and he learned to ride a bicycle, then a car, then a plane, and then a rocket. Finally, he was ready. He finally made it to the moon. Have you ever wanted to fly? Let's build a kite together. To make a kite, you'll need some lightweight material, like a trash bag. Before you unfold it, you'll want to trim off the bottom edge of the bag where it's sealed. Then you can open up the bag and lay it out flat. Cut a straight edge down one end of the bag and open it up into a long single sheet of plastic. Next, grab a ruler and a marker. Use the ruler to measure the shortest side of your rectangular piece of plastic. And divide that number by three. This will tell you how far apart to make the markings to create the pattern for your kite. This bag was about 22 inches high, so I took the measurement of 21 inches and divided by 3 to get 7. Mark off 4 measurements of 7 inches along the bottom edge of the bag. Just put a little dot by each 7 inch mark. 
Then mark off three 7 inch measurements on the vertical shorter edge of the bag. Mark off four 7 inch measurements along the longer top edge of the bag again. I'll be trimming off about an inch from my bag to make it 21 inches. So I made my marks along this edge about an inch in from the very edge. Finally, mark off three more measurements of seven going down the final edge. The last dot from this edge should join up with the dots along the bottom of the first edge. Next, it's time to connect the dots and make our kite pattern. Start at the third dot along the longer edge and draw a line extending one dot down and one dot over. And repeat the same thing in the opposite corner. Draw another line where the first one ends, this time going two dots down and one dot over. Repeat the same thing on the other side, drawing two dots down and one dot over. Draw a straight line connecting the last few dots to finish the pattern. You should be left with this sort of elongated hexagon shape. It kind of looks like a horseshoe crab or a stingray shape. Grab some scissors and cut out the kite. Follow along the straight lines. This is also a great time to use your marker to decorate your kite. Maybe a drawing or a note to moon. Next, we'll create the straw supports for our structure. Depending on the size of your bag, you'll probably need about five straws with one cut in half. Cut a slit in the end of one of the long straws. Pinch down the end and slide it into one of the short straws. Take another long straw, cut a slit in the end, narrow it down and insert it into the other end of the short straw. Tape over the places where the straws are joined together and you've got your first support. Repeat the same steps with the remaining straws to create the second kite support. These will provide the structure to support our kite. Tape down your straw supports at the inner corners of the kite extending vertically. You don't have to cover the whole straw in tape, but use enough so that the wind can't tear them apart. Then trim off the ends of the straws that overhang the kite. Next, wrap a piece of tape around the outer corners of the kite to secure them. We want to reinforce those corners because that is where we'll attach the string. Using a pin, a thumbtack, or even the prong of a fork, poke a small hole in the middle of the tape. Then push the string through the hole. You may want to use a needle or a bobby pin to thread it through the hole. Tie the string in a knot to secure it on the kite. You may want to double or triple knot it. Then add another piece of tape to reinforce the corner again. Unwind some thread and hold it up across the kite to create an even triangle shape. Cut the thread and attach it to the other edge of the kite the same way. Poke a hole, push the thread through, Tie it off and don't forget to reinforce it with another piece of tape. Lift up the string to find the center, then tie on a paper clip. Then attach the rest of the string to the other end of the paper clip. Cut some scraps from the leftover plastic and create some tails. Then your kite is ready to fly. Observe the way your kite flies on a windy day. The kite itself doesn't do anything to generate any force, so how does it stay up in the air? The answer is lift and drag. The air blows into the kite,
pushing it back in the same direction as the wind, and that is called drag. But the shape of the kite and the tension on the string can also cause the force of the wind to generate lift. The lift pushes the kite up while the drag pulls it back. You can feel the two forces pulling at your kite. Get them to balance out, and the sky's the limit. For more information about receiving STEAM kits, visit the Kids and Families page at coosbaylibrary.org.